our fellow members of Nights on Bikes and to bikers everywhere. My name is Bear Wozniak of the EWTN Long Ride Home TV series. Fellow Nights on Bikes member Peter Morton and I put this series of biker safety videos together for you at the inspiration of Ace Fagan, the president of Nights on Bikes USA. Peter is a certified safety instructor with both the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and Harley Davidson. So please feel free to share these videos with everyone. We also want to invite you to visit deepadventure.com, the home of Long Ride Home TV, and consider becoming a Patreon donor and help us produce the TV show. When you do, your name is listed in the credits of the TV show and you get all seasons past to all of the episodes of Long Ride Home, plus you get early access to every new episode as soon as we produce it, months before it's released. Once so again, thank you for watching our safety videos. Everybody, this is Bear Wozniak. I'm a Knights of Columbus member, along with Peter Morton, a fellow Knights of Columbus member, and we're both members and proud to be and can't believe the privilege of being a part of Knights on Bikes. And through the magic of television, I'm in my condo in Waikiki, and Peter's somewhere in North Georgia. And uh, Peter is certified with the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and the Harley Davidson Academy in Safety. Uh, instruction. He's given over 500 classes. And Ace Bagley, the president of the National Knights on Bikes, you know, queried if we wanted to put together a series of videos like this on safety. So we're going to do that. And uh, Peter has taught me an awful lot just listening to these classes because I'm a biker, but I'm just I'm just a very crude. I, I just kind of learned by myself, and and so I'm really I've really learned a lot. So Peter, what is the, one of the most favorite things I like to do is my wife and I, at least once a week, we go out for a ride together. I love riding with her. And uh, I know you like to ride with your wife. Tell us about your riding experiences. I think, d tell me about when you first rode with your wife. The uh, very first time was 1984, actually, when I was uh, trying to date her. You were trying to date her. <laughs> trying to date her. That sounds so familiar. <laughs> and the, uh, I got this great idea. I said, well, let's go for a motorcycle ride. And she said, yes. So we actually went to, um, uh, we went to a, uh, up in the, we live up in the mountains, of course. And we went up there and I spread out a nice picnic lunch for her. Uh, I had a catered and uh, I had a, a rose, a stem rose and a vase and all that. And this was, uh, this was uh, uh, a good introduction for her. To my my uh, motorcycle, your savoir faire and your biker, your tough, <laughs> gritty, gnarly biker image, uh, you well, traded well, it in for. for... <laughs> that was because it was uh, thirty six years ago, and we're still together, so that's a good thing. So, but one of the things I had to do, though, I had to. She had never ridden on a motorcycle before, and of course, you know, I've, I've had been into motorcycles quite some time before that, and, and uh, so I had to show her how to be a good passenger. Right. And maybe we can maybe we can talk about that today. I'll tell you what, Cindy the, Cindy and I love to ride together. And I remember when we first when we first rode, you know, a girl when you first meet her, she'll pretend she's into golfing or surfing or whatever you're into, football on Saturday afternoons. But then as soon as you kind of become more of a couple, then that all kind of interest fades. But with Cindy, she's still like when a Harley is anywhere within hearing hearing, she's like, squirrel you know, she she loves riding, and we love riding together. So, yeah, and I know though riding with her, it's a whole. I have to coach her up and tell her what I how she can help me. So, yeah, what are the basics of of, of having a passenger? Well, a lot of it is counterintuitive uh, for the first time rider, uh, passenger, and the the first thing is mounting the motorcycle. Uh, I like my passenger to get on the left side, and Kathy. You, you mean you mean get on from the left side? From the left side. Yeah. And she will, uh, she, we have a, a signal with ourselves when, when she's ready, she'll tap me on the shoulder. I know she's ready. And then when I'm ready for her to come on board, I'll just nod my head. That's just our little signal. So you're already in the upright position then before she gets on. I am generally in the upright position, yes. 
That that yeah, little thing. A lot, ways, a lot of different ways you can do that, but that's the most common. But that little thing you just said is so important that before she just hops on, she needs to let you know so that you're balanced and firm foundation for her. Okay. Absolutely. And uh, what she'll do also is she'll put her left foot on her foot peg and come. Here's an important tip, too, that a lot of passengers miss. She comes straight up. Wow. Comes straight up. True. And then she'll put her leg over and come straight down. What that does is that doesn't give me a whole lot of side to side instability. It's, uh, it's so smart. So true. Yeah. And, and Cindy and, does the same thing. She says, are you ready? She lets me know. She touches my shoulder. And I say, let's, okay, good. And yeah, she gets on. Communication. communication is the key. Uh, and she may get on and she may, she may get on and settle herself, but then she holds me when we're about to get going. We, we're connected. Right. And whatever, whatever your communication that you work out. Now, the, um, the uh, of course, well, let's go back up just a little bit. The, the motorcycle itself has to be ready for a passenger. Um, of course, it has to have a, a seat. For the passenger. Now you, you say that, and I'm smiling too, but you think that would be correct. But there are some motorcycles that don't have a seat. And I've actually seen some riders riding a passenger that is not equipped with a back seat for a passenger. I have seen towel. that too. Yeah. And just, I saw just that. Passenger. I saw that two days ago. Yeah. That's just. Uh, uh, no. Oh, nothing hey, hey, Peter, have you ever, been to, you ever been to Thailand or a. An, an Asian company where they put five people on a moped and and a calf. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like someone on the handlebars, on the back, forward, side saddle. Yeah. So that's uh, we're trying to prevent that on the road. Well, and you bring up, you bring up another good point. In in all fifty states uh, in the United States and Canada and uh, probably Mexico as well, is that a passenger's only legal position is to be on the seat behind the rider, nothing in front. Sometimes you'll see kids in the front and that kind of thing. But that, Yeah, that's that so is, dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And there's only uh, all the motorcycles in, in this country and uh, where this where you can ride a motorcycle in this country are made for two people maximum. That's it. Right. Okay, what's um, the next what's the next thing you do? You're you're you, you, she's on she's gotten she's saddled up. Well she should have the uh, uh, proper gear on as well. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever your state mandates, uh, in Georgia, for instance, uh, a helmet is required, some kind of footwear and eye protection, uh, different right. states maybe. Uh, that's, so one thing people, that's one thing you really need to tell them about is people don't realize you need to have good, good, a decent pair of sunglasses if you're going to ride a motorcycle or some form of, exactly, some or, you, or of your ride. eyes are going to be dried out and, not, and that's blurry. That technical, that's that technical um, term again that I used before. Uh, you don't want schmutz in your eye. Well, you know, also, Peter, I like for my passenger to wear glasses so they can see clearly because usually I'm too scared and I've had my eyes shut when I'm driving. So good if she does. Okay. As her Definitely open. better eyes need to be open, yeah. Yeah. Someone and should. have a good, good set of uh, sunglasses on. That right. would be good. Description if it's recorded. Okay, but the gear is real important. Whatever you feel now that, you know, the uh, gear, gear selection, in my opinion, is how much risk are you willing to accept? So whatever gear that you ride, that's the minimum that your passenger should have. And so men need whatever. to be prepared uh, to have that gear for them. If they're going to go for a ride, and, and maybe this is her first time ride, you should have the helmet or whatever gear you should be the one kind of chivalrously uh, providing if she, if she doesn't. Otherwise, you have no business taking her on a ride. Right. And don't forget that now that you're out in the elements, too, weather changes. Temperatures change frequently going up and down. Um, altitudes and also you may be caught in the rain so have have some good rain gear I think the out. first time Cindy and I rode it was in Florida and the sky opened up and dumped like waterfalls on us and we pulled over and it just happened to be a chocolate factory <laughs> and so that little rainfall became kind of a romantic moment for us we went in and had a, you know we were just getting to know each other went in and had some chocolate but yeah, yeah the, the, no rain gear would have helped that. Maybe some scuba gear. <laughs> well, you should always you should always be prepared and right. uh, be able to pull over. Um, the the uh, passenger also. Uh, well, let's talk. We talked about mounting. Let's talk about dismounting before we mm. some other riding. 
When you're dismounting, it's very similar as well. Now, what I like to do in dismounting is, is have the passenger get off first, and I'll put my side stand down, my kickstand down, uh, and it may not even be touching the ground. Right. But if something, if something should happen, then I've got that back up where we're not. That's exactly what I do. I have the kickstand down, but I'm still upright. But right. just in case, it's like an outrigger on a canoe. You know, if you're gonna hoolie. You, if you're going to flip, as we say, huli is like huli huli chicken. You spin the chicken, rotisserie. Uh, I'm going to always have fall towards the kickstand, but the kickstand is down. and right. But the bike is trying to be maintained upright. And she gets off going that direction, so if this is going to fall, it's going to want to fall to the, onto the support of a kickstand. And it's the same thing in reverse, getting off. And that is she's coming straight up. Her leg, her right leg is coming back over the saddle backwards. And she's putting her right leg on the ground, and then she's off. And of course, and then, we signal, same signal too. If she'll and be I'm, uh, tap. Exactly. And I'm always looking around to see is there sand or any debris that she needs to be careful of, or I need to be careful of in the, in, when you're standing still, so it doesn't slip and slide. Really good tip for the uh, for the uh, kickstand and and Florida is is real bad about that. Is you have very uh, unstable ground, and that kickstand wants to go in that ground, and your motorcycle goes er, over. And uh, so a side stand puck is, is a real good idea too. And that can be uh, anything, uh, yes. anything to, to spread out the weight of the side stand. I've got one that I carry in each of my motorcycles. Absolutely. So yeah, it's so important. I do too. And I just take it with me. All right, so let's talk about when you're on the motorcycle and you're riding, the, the counterintuitive part about this, and this is the toughest thing for Kathy to get used to. I bet I know um, what you're going to say. I bet there's two things you're going to say, but go ahead. Let me see if I guess them. I'm writing them down. <laughs> and and even the grand even the grandkids when they ride with me, mm -hmm. is they want to. When I'm slowing down, that's when they want to start. Exactly. Ex they feel more safe, and they start squirreling around, and that's when you're the least stable, right? Exactly. Exactly. So have that conversation with your passenger, and make sure that they understand that. And even the little skinny grandchildren or grand daughter that rides with me she's gonna weigh 60 pounds wet and if she's back on that back seat and she does any kind of movement i can do it and i can tell you if she does that at an inopportune time that can be detrimental well i could tell you my tandem surfing i tell the i always ask if i'm teaching someone new have you ever ridden a motorcycle before been a passenger yes well you know when the motorcycle leans you lean you go with it you don't counter lean just because i'm leaning on a motorcycle the passenger shouldn't counter lean. She should lean with me. It's the same thing on a surfboard. And I can tell you this, you know, as a world champion and, and, and the, the guys who are tandem surfing at that level, when I have a woman in a lift, I can tell if her eyes are even looking right or left or up or down. Because like Cindy in her first competition with me, uh, she I could feel her on waiting in an awkward way. And I told her, look up, look up. And it fixed all the balancing for that particular lift. So even looking right and left can on balance the bike they just need to be firm during that slowdown phase absolutely big 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 I deal. Tell passengers that all the time too just you know lean with me right and then it occurred to me some of the older grandchildren i finally figured it out maybe that's not the best way to explain it. because then they because lean too much <laughs> what was happening was i tell them okay lean with me so what are they doing well they're leaning now here they're on the back of the motorcycle and they're leaning with me what are they seeing Oh boy, that ground's coming up awful fast, so I'm going to uh, straighten up. And like I said, even the little skinny 60 pounder, and when she straightens up, it's messing up the whole dynamic. Yeah, so, so just, you know, we do what we do when we tandem surf, because it's so much alike, is we, we, and when you dance, you dance cheek to cheek. When we tandem surf, and before she, I put her in a lift, she turns and she her cheeks against my cheek. When her back's to me, her cheeks against my cheek. And the same thing goes on the motorcycle. Bring your back against my chest, close, don't let your head ragdoll like that. Bring it so it's closer to mine or even touching because then we're like one and the motorcycle doesn't have to figure out, oh, which are one of these two contrary forces should I believe? You know, which one should I be following? It's well, important. I like to keep it nice and simple when I have a new passenger, especially like a grandchild that hasn't ridden with me much. All I'll tell them is something very simple. Okay, all I want you to do is when we, when we slow down, that's when you need to be perfectly still. Yep. When we get moving, you can move around a little bit if you need to adjust. And right. here's the important thing. When we're going into turns, mm. all I want you to do is I want you to stay upright, but I want you to look over the shoulder where we're turning. So amazing. It's just so, yeah, it's so right. You know what? That's all I want you to do. If we're going that way, look over the shoulder. If we're going that way, 
look over the shoulder. That's just perfect. And even actually look. Huge difference. You know, when I'm on a tandem surfboard, I'll say to the partner, look left. And when I'm trying to paddle to the left, I just say, look left. And when I, you know, and so it's, it, it, and when people are learning to surf, I say, if you want to turn left, look left, which is also true if you're riding a motorcycle and you see a right. danger on the right-hand side of the road, you don't want to look there because the bike's going to want to turn into that. So your eye, where your eyes are, where you're fixated, just like in, in our walk with Jesus, you know, keep your eyes fixed on the Lord, you're probably going to be okay. But when you start looking at all the problems around you and the worries and the cares of the world or the lust of the eye, the pride of life, you're going to end up crashing. So it's, it's the same sort of application. Keep your eyes where they're supposed to be. Everything else will follow. Which is also very interesting because the passenger is actually an active participant in the ride. There you go. That, That's so cool. They're not, yeah, they're not actually just sitting back there. Now, my, my oldest daughter, when she was riding with me and, and she was little, uh, she would fall asleep back there. And... Uh, <laughs> That, that, now that's interesting. What's well, not? If you know, she would fall asleep, and how would I know she'd fall asleep? Well, I've got a, a permanent scar right back here in my in my uh, just below my neck where that helmet was just go kaboom, boom. And that's when I knew that you know, I'd have to give her a little okay, wake up. And uh, but she she would uh, she would feel that comfortable, uh, well, just you know, falling fall asleep back there. So at least one person, at least one person should be awake on the bike at, at all times. I mean, I know my my. I've always said I wanted to pass away when I die. I want to die the way my grandfather died. He died peacefully in his sleep. Um, I did. I don't want to die the way his screaming passengers died. <laughs> okay, there you go. That's a, that's good advice right there. Um, the other thing that uh, that they a lot of passengers don't realize too is that you want them to keep their feet on the foot pegs at all times, even when we stop. Because sometimes the the overwhelming desire would be, I'm putting my foot down, so they want to put their foot down. Ooh, yeah. Don't do that. Uh, make sure that they understand that. Also, on a motorcycle, you have exposed hot parts, like a muffler. Wait, how many scars do you have from mufflers, by the way, M motorcycle scars? How many Heat scars, heat scars. From from pipes, how many scars do you have from pipes? Well, how many scars do I have? Uh, just a couple minor ones. Now my daughter has one on her leg that's about about the size of a silver dollar. Well, you, you know, know Hawaii, Yeah, me too. I got like four. Two are pretty bad. Hawaii, we we ride without any. You know, we ride in our surf trunks or our, our shorts usually. So and, uh, and even slippers, which isn't very wise, but you can really get scorched. <laughs> and, uh, well, that, that not a good idea. Again, it's all about how much risk you're willing to accept. You know, we're all adults, and and uh, you have to make that decision. Someone just um, called me an adult. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, let's see. When we're um, okay, oh, going over um, bumps, railroad tracks, uh, speed bumps, those kinds of things. What uh, you may want to, and I don't make a big deal out of this, but uh, you may want to inform you if, you, if you know you're going to go over some of that stuff, you may want to inform them of, as just before we get over it, you might want to loosen the the uh, grip on the seat, so to speak, and it actually even, to some extent, rise mm -hmm. up on the seat, because when that seat, you go over that bump and that, that seat comes back up at you, uh, that, could, that could smart just a little bit. Mm-hmm. They need to be aware of that too. Again, that goes back to the being a, an active participant in the ride. They're not. They're not all that passive. They need to be actively engaged with you as you're riding. Mm. Um, I can tell you that uh, having a pass. Oh, and, and what to hold on to too. The, the passenger needs to understand what to hold on to. Now, most of my bikes have a uh, a, a pilot or a driver a backrest. So they can hold on to that. Um, for the right passenger, it's very good that they're holding on to you. Mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for the right passenger, that could be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but they need to know what to hold on to. And so on a couple of my motorcycles, there's actually passenger hand grips off the seat. So you need to, whatever bike that you're on, they need to understand what to hold on to mm -hmm. uh, as they're riding. Or if they need to, you know, be a little bit more secure. Mm -hmm. But that's that goes back to part, being part of the uh, active participant too, holding on to you. And both of you know by just the subtle body movements of of what's going on too. So that's really the optimal way of doing it. Is mm -hmm. to some kind of contact with you, usually on the waist, your waist, the pilot's waist. Exactly, I think so too. Yeah. 
So now the other thing that um, um, that we're talking about, and actually, well, you need to. We went to talking about getting the motorcycle ready. Uh, there are some adjustments that you can do to the motorcycle too to carry a uh, get it ready to carry a passenger. Uh, a couple of things you can do, and that has to do with um, looking at the owner's manual and seeing what they suggest on uh, tire pressure. You may increase your tire pressure uh, to accommodate the extra load, and also um, the there you can do some suspension adjustments. Mm. Now, a couple of tips on that. Uh, first of all, don't ever call your passenger a load. Don't ever do that. <laughs> um, and adjust before they get there. Make sure that you make all the bike adjustments before they get there. <laughs> now it's just too hard to explain. And never, when you you the looking up weight ranges on how to make those adjustments, never ask her how much she weighs. Yeah, never ask that question. See, this is basic chivalry. Those are three prime tips there. You won't find that in any books or manuals. But that, <laughs> those are some good tips. That Probably you, you learned it the hard way. <laughs> well, let's just say I learned them. <laughs> yeah. just learn. now you're, you're also talking we talked about really um, passengers are are really cargo you're, you're putting extra cargo on a motorcycle you can look at it that way mm. and you can carry some other things as well um, and and there's other things that you can do will shift to cargo now uh, mm. there's all kinds of different luggage there's how to load saddlebags there's uh, Harley calls them tour packs the metric world calls them trunks um, and you can you can pack quite a lot of stuff. However, what a lot of people don't realize in cargo is all of those things, saddlebags, trunks, tour packs, have weight limits. The, uh, the uh, luggage racks they have weight limits, and they're not very much. Like the um, the going that I have is recommended no more than twelve pounds in the trunk. That's not a lot. Wow. Uh, Marley is around fifteen. And, what, and why why would they have that limitation? What are the things that would go wrong if you overpacked it? Okay. The well, what you're doing is we the MSF came up with a concept called a load triangle, and the load triangle starts at the top of the rider's head and goes down. If you draw a line from the head to the uh, front axle and rear axle, and that's where you want to keep your weight. Keep it low and keep it inside that load keep triangle. Keep it that's low like and keep it inside that triangle. Motorcycle is designed. It's just like now, a, flying an airplane. You 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 make sure that load is distributed properly. I've seen people with highly weighted in the back. It seems like the rear, the front tire might not have the stability. Or, or anything that you're loading. There's certain things that you want to be aware of. Yeah. Now, if you think about it, most of the saddlebag and all of the tour pack is outside the load track. That's where the, the instability is. That's where the center of gravity gets all messed up. And that's why they're just not. And they're, they're made out of plastic, too. And, and plastic is going to break if you put too much weight. And especially as motorcycle is, is jarring quite a bit. So they're just not made to put a whole bunch of stuff on. So they keep that in mind, too. And you, you're on a motorcycle. You're supposed to be somewhat of a minimalist anyway. So you don't want to pack a whole lot of stuff. I can't bring my uh, bowling ball. Actually, I carried a bowling ball one time. On, on the <laughs> Your weight set. Yeah, but they well, yeah, but you want to you want to just be aware that you can't put a whole lot of uh, stuff. And also in the saddlebags, for instance, you want to make sure, just like a trailer, don't overload one side and lighten up the other side. Mm. So you want to balance that out too, because you're you're talking about handling. Because how do you steer a motorcycle by leaning it? And when you're upsetting that uh, weight uh, differential, you're going to upset your your balance of the motorcycle. And when you go into that turn, you're going to have some pretty unexpected um, outcomes. So you want to make sure that you're, that you're loading it correctly. And also just like you're loading a trailer, you want to make sure that the, the things that you're strapping on there, like uh, this, this motorcycle here has a nice luggage rack off the back and I'll strap some things on there all the time if I need to carry it. And, but make sure that it is strapped on securely. You see a lot of times where uh, things, uh, motorcycles come flying off and, and all that. Now, bungee cords, uh, I have one here somewhere. Bungee cords are your, are pretty good, your best friend, but they're, they're kind of limited. 
Uh, you have to have all different sizes. This happens to be a short one. That, that looks a little bit weak. Yeah, this one. And bungee cords are okay, um, but you have to, you know, there's a lot of different wrapping around to make them tight. The yeah. thing that I like uh, is a product called, and I don't, you know, endorse any particular brands or anything, but this is called a rock strap. Are okay? Can we see it better? It's black on black. Show us it up high so we can see it better. Okay. This okay. is, uh, yeah. it's, called a, it's called a rock strap. Mm. And what it is, it's got the best of both worlds. This is web strapping on this side. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you'll oh, wrap that's awesome. around. And this is bungee on this side. Perfect. So what it does is you cinch that down. And the, the neat thing about it is there's a clip right here to disconnect. That's awesome. That's a great this product. And they come in all different sizes. So that, that's something to look into. Uh, those are, I, I, I got to tell you something about cargo, okay? Before, because we got to we got to take a break from this now. Um, but I remember going into Molokai, right? I fly into Molokai, and I, I had a friend who would bring my motorcycle. But when I would fly in, he would he would just leave it at the airport and leave the keys under the ground. I would have a backpack, a backpack, maybe a laptop, and I had no no cases in my little my little motorcycle ha motorcycle I had. In Molokai, I was kind of breaking all the rules, man. I can tell you. The only thing is, if I wiped out, I probably would have lived because I was padded. I was just <laughs> engulfed in in luggage, and I only had to go, you know, eight miles from the airport. Is there anything else you want to tell us before we wrap up this session? On well, the backpack. The backpack is. I'm glad you brought that up. Is is probably the best way to carry cargo because it's inside the low triangle, and it's not going anywhere because it's strapped onto you. And mm -hmm. it can provide you a, um, a limited amount of protection, at least on your back anyway, which is where you need it because your spine is hard to fix. Hey, you guys, we're talking to Peter Morton. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak. Peter Morton is uh, certified with the Harley-Davidson Academy, uh, the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. He's given over 500 courses on, on safety. But as we say this, we need for you to know we're giving you some of our thoughts. You need to figure this all out for yourself. It's all up to you how you apply it. Don't take our word for it. We're just giving you something to to think about. I think the next subject we're going to talk about is going to be really interesting, and that's riding in a pack. So uh, you can go to deepadventure.com to find out more about uh, the other the other videos, or you can go to Bear Wozniak YouTube and subscribe there. You'll see a playlist just specifically for motorcycles. So until next week, Peter uh, Morton, Between Two Bikes. Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. Peter Mort and I want to thank you for your commitment to Jesus Christ, to the Catholic faith, to Nights on Bikes, and also to motorcycle safety and for considering some of the things that we've shared with you on our video. We also want to invite you to visit deepadventure.com. It's the home of the EW10 Long Ride Home TV series, and we invite you to become a Patreon donor. When you do, your name is listed in the credits of the TV show and you get an all seasons pass to all of the episodes as well as early access to every new episode as we produce them. EWTN provides a limited amount of funding for our TV show so we count on donors like you to help us produce the show. Thank you once again for joining us for our safety briefing.